My name is Deirdre, and I'm in recovery from codependency. Um, hello. Um, so I was sitting in the audience where you are sitting maybe about a year and a half ago, and Joanne, who we just mentioned, was sharing about her life, and I was like, oh, huh, hmm. <laughs> and that moment of recognition changed my life in so many ways for the better, and I want to thank Joanne for sharing her story um, vulnerably and courageously, and encourage all of you, share your stories of what God is doing and how you're being healed, because you never know down the road who might be sharing their story because you did that as well. Um, but this is my story right now. So Joanne was talking about codependency, and a little before I'd heard her speak, I recognized this pattern in my life, in my adult life, and it went kind of something like this. I would meet somebody, usually it would be a guy, and someone, I'm like, oh, you have great potential, and I like you, and you're interesting and funny, and let's hang out, and I'm going to help you realize your great potential. And so I spent a lot of time with these people, and I would be there for them. I'd build trust. I'd be like, I'm going to help you know about Jesus. Um, they would share their heart with me. I would hold their stories with them. They would say, Deirdre, I appreciate you so much. No one listens like you do. No one, I don't know how I would follow God if you didn't come along. And I would feel good about being helpful. I'd be like, I'm being a faithful Christian, helping people know who Jesus is um, and building trust with them. And I would envision all the excellent things they would do for God and the things we would do for God together. And somewhere along the line, things would go a little bit south. I would start thinking about this person all the time. I'd be problem solving their life for them. I would plan the next conversation we would have together that would help them. Um, I would spend less time with other people who I would say were equally or more important to me than this person was. Um, and. I would get distracted. I'd always be thinking and all these things like, how, how is this going to help? What am I going to do next? And then I would realize, I'm like, oh, I have tried to be everything for you. And now I have succeeded and you expect everything of me. Wait, I don't, that's not good. <laughs> People are supposed to need God and community, not one Deirdre. And I would backpedal. And then they would get hurt. They would say, but you said this. And I'd say, yeah, I'm sorry. And we would have conflict, and we'd do conflict resolution. And then I would hurt them again, and we'd have more conflict resolution. It would get bigger and worse and more messy. And one time, this got stopped halfway through because I moved away. That was the grace of the Lord. And a couple of times, I have no longer have a relationship with these people. And I would have told you, yeah, they have a lot of problems. <laughs> but I wouldn't have been able to tell you, oh, I had a problem. And I contributed to that. That was my bad as well. One time, I went on a road trip with a friend. And halfway through, she's like, Georgia, all you talk about is this guy. I'm like, yeah, he needs a lot of help. I need to help him. I need to figure this out. And she's like, oh. <laughs> But I couldn't see it. I couldn't see where I was not okay. Um, and so a few weeks after I heard Joanne talk and thought, oh, and then thought about this pattern in my life, one of these relationships that I had blew up in my face. And I was like, oh, I've given expectations to you that I will never be able to meet. And I've expected things of you that you will never be able to meet. And if I don't fix something, I'm going to hurt a lot of people really badly. This is not okay. And I wouldn't have been able to tell you this at the time, but that was my first step moment. I'm in big trouble. I can't fix myself. I need God to help me. I need other people to help me. Um, and I'm in Christian ministry, like full-time Christian ministry. And I realized, I looked at my job, and I was like, if my job was a person, I would be codependent with that person. Like the group of people that I'm sharing the Lord with, like, I'll do anything for you. I'll neglect my friends. I'll neglect my family. I'll stay up all night. If I had a firstborn child, I would sell my firstborn child for you. But I don't have a firstborn child because I put all the energy I might have spent on a romantic relationship into my job and into these people. And I realized my entire relationship system was predicated on being able to be a good person and a useful person and a helpful person. And that's how I measured my worth and my value as a human being. And I would have told you, I am God's child. <laughs> that's what gives me value as a person, but it's not how I was living my life. And 
I work at a summer camp, and every night there's a testimony time, and every night there's this big sign, and someone tells a story, and then they flip their sign around, and it says, and then Jesus. So this is my and then Jesus moment. <laughs> I did Life Lab. You just heard Alex sharing about it. And it was a really bizarre experience for me because I'm used to thinking a lot about everything I do. And doing Life Lab was like walking through a dark forest at night. And you don't really know where the path is. You can only feel it crunching under your feet. And you know that you've gotten off because you feel the leaves rustling. But you don't really know like how you're going to get to where you're going. You just keep putting one foot in front of the other and trusting that the road will, in fact, get you home and an animal will not eat you. Um, and it was doing Life Lab was like that. I was like, I don't understand how getting up and reading my Bible first thing in the morning is going to help me with my problems. But Joanne says it will. <laughs> and the Lord has told me to do this, so I will do it. So I, I got up and I read my Bible first thing. And I made a list of everybody who had hurt me in my life that I could think of, and then I forgave them all. And I stopped doom scrolling through Facebook, and I stopped watching YouTube videos for hours, and I was totally honest when Joanne asked me how I was doing and when my boss asked me how I was doing. And I just kept putting one foot in front of the other. And I felt like so much work. I felt like I was doing all this heavy lifting. And it was. It was hard and painful and challenging, to be totally honest with myself. But also, like, have you ever been in those group photos when someone lies on everybody's arms? And you're like the person, maybe you're the person that got their torso, and you're like, oh, make the photo be over right now. I don't have to hold this person anymore. <laughs> but I'm usually one holding, like, a toe. And like, I'm holding this toe. It's like, it was like that. God was the person actually bearing the weight of all of the work and all of the change that I needed. And I was like holding someone's toe like that. And that's what God is like. And that's what it's like when he actually brings change in our lives. Um, and he did it for me. He gave me a lot of freedom and a lot of hope. Um, I went back to this person, our relationship exploded. I said, I cannot have this kind of relationship with you anymore. It's not going to work for me. I cannot be everything for you. And I was afraid, but I was not paralyzed by that fear, and I did it anyway. I could recognize when I was starting to get that spot with someone, or I would meet someone like, oh, you have all this potential. I would say, back away, Deirdre, back away. <laughs> Maybe they do, and you are not the person to unlock their potential. That is the Lord's job. Um, I could, yeah, for, I don't know what you usually do to help you sleep at night. For years, I'd read novels, and people would say, oh, good for you, you read. And I would say, no. Nobody should need anything to get them to sleep tonight, not even novels. <laughs> There's a lot of socially acceptable addictions out there. Reading novels is one of them. There's a lot of Christianly acceptable addictions out there, like helping people. Um, and I didn't have to do that anymore. I, didn't, I could put myself to sleep. I could let God put me to sleep. Um, I no longer feel the urge to buy anything at all, like something, anything, when I walk down Bank Street where I live. And... I can walk myself, I can talk myself down from, but he needs me. He does not need me. It's fine. He will be fine. Um, and I'm not perfect. This is like very much a process for me, but as part of the codependency for me has been the pursuit of perfection, it's actually really good that God is taking me through this slowly. And every time I mess up, he's like, all right, I guess you need more me. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> Let's do it again. Um, God is an equal opportunity healer. He'll, do, he'll take anything you throw at him and say, all right, we can work with this. We can do something good here. And I think as much as Satan is able to weaponize your empathy and your compassion, your drive to help other people, like he can use those for destruction and danger. God can take all of your worst moments and use those for healing and hope for you and for other people.